Okay, this is going to be my bluffer's guide to differential equations. We are going to have a look at a variable x, and x is going to be my distance away from home. Uh, so I'm going to have a think about x, my distance, I'm going to have a think about speed and acceleration. So uh, distance from home, speed and acceleration, often the easiest way to get your head around what these different equa differential equations mean. Uh, let's start off nice and simple. Uh, I'm going to plot my distance from home x against my time t. So I've got an object that's travelling at a constant speed. Uh, I'm going to get a straight line. I can draw a triangle and this height of my triangle is the distance that I've travelled in this time t. When I take my distance and I divide it by my time that's going to give me my speed. So the gradient, so I've taken the increase in so my height, my distance, uh, and I divide it by my base length, time taken, that's going to give me the gradient of that straight line. So if I've got a uh, plotting distance against time and I've got the gradient of that straight line, it's going to give me my constant speed. Uh, right, let's have a look at another example, a little bit more interesting. This time, instead of travelling at a constant speed, it's getting faster. So I've got a curve. The gradient of that curve at the start is quite shallow, so object's not travelling very quickly. Towards the end, the gradient of that curve is getting much steeper, so the object's moving much more quickly. Uh, if I wanted to work out what the speed was at that point here, I could draw myself a tiny little triangle and I can have a look at my change in my x and I could divide it by my change in my time over here and it's going to give me a value of the speed approximately within that space. So all the way along this curve the speed's changing, the gradient of the line's changing, so it's starting off shallow, it's getting steeper, my speed's changing as I move along that curve. Right, what mathematicians do when they start talking about differential equations. They'll start off with the same curve and they're going to make this triangle as small as possible. So the smaller that gets, the more accurate my speed is going to be at that single point. Uh, and as I do that, as I make that triangle smaller and smaller and smaller, what happens is I end up with a tangent to that curve. So that straight line touches that curve at a single point. It just touches it, it doesn't cross it, uh, depending on how well I've drawn it, uh, it's not supposed to cross it, uh, it's just going to touch that curve. And if I take this tiny little height of my triangle, and I'm going to call that dx, and I'm going to divide it by the tiny little distance, uh, uh, tiny di little amount of time, dx by dt, uh, and that's going to be equal to my speed. So what we say is that that's the differential of that curve it's the dx by dt, it's the small change in distance divided by the small change in time. And it's going to be, what it represents is the speed of the object at that point in time. Uh, and it's equal to the gradient of the tangent that's touching that curve. So I can work out the gradient of that tangent, uh, I've actually got the differential, I've got the speed of that object at that point in time. Uh, it can get a bit more complicated because, well, it's not a straight line, but hey. Uh, if I, instead of plotting x, I plot v, which I'm going to use to represent my speed, my dx by dt. Uh, if I had an object travelling at constant speed, I'd just get a straight horizontal line. Constant acceleration, I'd get a straight line, but pointing upwards. If I do something a little bit more interesting, uh, I've got acceleration, my speed and my acceleration changing over time. Again, I could draw a tangent, and I could work out this tiny change in v, and compare it with the tiny change in t, and that would give me the differential of my velocity. Well, what's, what do I mean by change in velocity? Change in velocity over time, that's just equal to my acceleration. So my acceleration is changing all the way along this curve. It's starting off quite small. Gradient of that curve is quite shallow. Gradient here is quite steep. My acceleration is much higher. So dv by dt is my acceleration. Well, all my v was was this dx, my first differential of my var variable x. 
So what I can do is I can describe this as the oh, just off the page uh, the second differential d2x by dt squared uh, is the same as my dv by dt and it's equal to my acceleration. So if I start off with a variable which is my distance away from home if I differentiate it once I've got my speed and if I differentiate it a second time I've got my acceleration. Cool. Sometimes some of those equa equations could be quite simple. As soon as you've got one of these, either dx by dt, dv by dt, d2x by dt squared, you've got what's known as a differential equation. Sometimes they can be quite simple, sometimes they can be quite tricky. Um, let's have a think about how we can complicate it. So imagine we've got uh, Tim and he's tanking along the motorway at 60 uh, and he gets a call over the radio and he needs to put his foot down. Uh, the acceleration of his car, this is my speed and this is my time, uh, the acceleration of the car is probably going to get, uh, uh, going to reduce as he's getting closer to the maximum speed of the car. So he puts his foot down at 60, he's probably got pretty good pickup, uh, but towards the end, that acceleration is going to drop off. So his acceleration, d2x by dt squared, is probably going to be some sort of function of his speed. So I'm trying to make it uh, as realistic as possible. I'm not going to say he's got constant acceleration. I'm going to say actually his acceleration is going to drop off as his speed gets taller, uh, speed gets greater. Okay. So we've got we've linked in this second differential with our acceleration in with our speed. Uh, we could also have a model where if we put uh, a ball on the end of a bit of elastic, we pulled it. Um, we can imagine that if I let go, the acceleration there isn't going to be as much as if I pull it a bit further and I let go from here, the acceleration is going to be that much greater. So the acceleration, d2x by dt squared, could well be some sort of function of how far that object is away from home. So the further away from home I pull it, the greater that acceleration. So we're starting to come up with some really complicated uh, equations that are linking your acceleration uh, some sort of function of your whoops, uh, speed plus some sort of function of your distance away from home uh, and it might depend on something else as well it might might have some other variable some constant or, or something else to make it more complicated still but you can make these models as complicated or as simple as you want uh, but as long as it's got one of these dx by dt's in, you're looking at the rate of change of something, the rate of change of position, rate of change of speed, uh, it becomes a differential equation, and there's different techniques that you can use to solve them. Uh, right, one other curveball. Uh, at the moment, we've only really considered one variable, uh, but you could easily end up with a situation, imagine we've got an aeroplane, uh, so x is horizontal distance, and y equals height. Uh, it's not too difficult to think that my horizontal speed might be linked in some way to my vertical speed. So the more quicker I'm dropping, I can probably convert some of that speed into horizontal speed as well. So it's probably some sort of function of my speed y. So in this case, we've got a relationship between x and y. It's a differential equation that's linking those two up. If I've got a couple of different variables, I'm going to need more than one of these equations to try and solve for my values of x and y because they've got this relationship between them. But again, what I've done is I've made this model pretty complex. Um, so why do people make them more complicated? The more complicated the model, the more likely it is to follow reality. So the simpler it is, it's going to be making some sort of heroic assumptions that probably aren't going to model real life very well. The more complicated, generally, it's going to be more representative. But there's a caveat to that, and that is, if I came up with something quite simple, like my speed is equal to some function of some multiple constant times an x squared, it's got a simple model, could differentiate that really easily. 
um, but I want to work out what this value of k is. It might be quite easy to do k, and I might be able to come up with a really reliable value for my k. Alternatively, I could come up with something really complicated, and I could put this equal to x squared e to the uh, k t, uh, and you know whatever else time the, uh, and I could end up with lots of different um, variables in here that I need to work out. Those are called your parameters of your model. So my a and my k are going to be my parameters. The more complex your model is, the more difficult it is to come up with your parameters. And sometimes what you can find is if this model is really complicated, your parameters become really unreliable, in which case the model is a lot worse than actually picking something really quite simple where you can actually work out these parameters quite simply. Okay, So there's a balance in there between something that's really complicated, but you can't parameterize it very well. Basically, a, a, a really complex model, but with really poor parameters, is as useful as a chocolate teapot. Absolutely, just throw it out the window. Uh, so there's a balance. Complicated, slightly simpler, but think about your parameters in terms of how you're putting the stuff together. Right, how does that link into the stuff that you're doing? So if we're talking about x's distance, and the rate of change in my distance is my speed, and the second rate of change of my distance is my acceleration, well, you can sort of see if x is your number of COVID cases and then you do your first differential over time might be your uh, your rate of change of cases, so your number of new cases, for example. Um, and your second differential might be the rate of change of your number of new cases that are coming through you can start to see how the differential equations are going to be really quite important for the work that you guys are doing. Similarly, you might find that you know, if your x is your number of COVID cases, you might need a second variable, your y, might be the number of cases where people have had it and have recovered. Um, and then there's a link between your number of x cases, number of COVID cases, your number of people that have had COVID and have recovered and there's a constraint between the two because your X plus Y plus the people who haven't yet been infected at all is going to equal your total population. So you've got a, some sort of link in between these, these variables, your X and your Y and this rate of change of cases is going to lead you into a differential equation and this rate of change of new cases, your D2 X by DT squared, that changing rate of growth and somehow your guys are going to come up with some model that's going to link your x with your dx by dt by your second differential, your d2x by dt squared. And I keep writing that in the wrong place. Hey, there you go.